It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pierce coming to you from Baltimore. Last week, storms battered the southwest of the United States in Louisiana, which was the hardest hit state. Three people lost their lives and thousands lost their homes and businesses. The Sabine River on the border of Louisiana and Texas hit the highest water levels on record, surpassing the previous record from February 1999 by over five feet. Climate scientists are saying we are not only in a period of global warming, we are now entering a global climate change emergency. As NOAA recently confirmed that February surpassed all records in terms of temperatures, January 2016 also broke all-time record for above average temperatures. But the extent to which February broke temperature records alarmed many scientists. The month was more than 0.2 degrees Celsius warmer. Now, many scientific studies have linked extreme weather events to climate change. And in February, Cyclone Winston hit the island nation of Fiji, killing at least 17 people. Now, a new report from the National Academies of sciences titled Tracking the Fingerprints of Climate Change says that scientists have developed tools to create complex computer models and assess the historical record. They can now determine with confidence to what extent climate change has impacted some extreme weather events. To discuss all of this is Dr. Michael E. Mann. He's joining us from State College, Pennsylvania. Michael is the Distinguished Professor and Director of the Earth System Science Center at Penn State University and the author of the book Hockey Stick and the Climate Wars, as well as Dire Predictions, Understanding Climate Change. Michael, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's good to be with you. So, Michael, last week, the storms that battered the southwest of the U.S., in Louisiana in particular, now, these uh, uh, states were very hardly hit. The, lots of people lost their lives and thousands lost their homes and businesses. And Sabine River in particular uh, caused this uh, tragedy. Uh, give us a sense of uh, what this report now says in terms of linking what, um, you know, these kinds of events in the past, you know, people just thought it was um, normal. And so, you know, once in a while, like back in 1999, we had these floods and now we are having them again. Uh, but is this linked to uh, global warming and how do we know that by way of this report yeah so there are these recent events that you've alluded to uh this uh, you know over the past year we've seen uh, the most powerful hurricane ever observed uh, uh that was in, in the pacific uh, in the northern hemisphere and then uh, as you mentioned just weeks ago we saw the strongest storm ever measured in the southern hemisphere uh among other flooding events, we had record flooding. In fact, it was characterized as a thousand year event, which means it shouldn't happen more than once in a thousand years in South Carolina last year. And none of these events occur in isolation. There's an emerging pattern here. And that pattern is consistent with what climate scientists have been predicting uh, literally for decades, that as we warm up the earth, as we change the climate and there's more energy in the atmosphere, uh, we potentially see stronger hurricanes and tropical storms, uh, worse flooding events. But ironically, um, those coexist with uh, increased drought in many parts of the world. So in some places like California, uh, we have seen drought conditions that are unprecedented uh, as far back as we can go, even with paleoclimate data stretching more than a thousand years back. And so many parts of the world are getting drier, but because the atmosphere is warmer, it can potentially hold more moisture. And when conditions are conducive to rainfall, when you have storms, you can actually get larger amounts of rainfall and larger amounts of snow. Um, like the record event that we saw in Washington, D.C. last year. Um, all of those events are tied to a warmer atmosphere that has more moisture in it. When you have storms, they can produce more rainfall or more snow, 
Uh, but in many regions, those storms become fewer and farther between, or we should say that uh, rainfall becomes fewer and farther between. And so you get unprecedented drought in California, in uh, parts of the Middle East and Near East. Um, what this latest report does is it really connects the dot. Uh, you have the most authoritative science organization uh, in the U.S., the U.S. National Academy of Sciences, uh, formed back uh, in the 19th century uh, by Abraham Lincoln. Um, and the National Academy now has lent its imprimatur, has spoken uh, with uh, great authority about the issue of climate and extreme weather, and they've connected the dots. What the report has concluded is that there is a relationship between human-caused climate change and the increased extreme weather events, or many of the types of extreme weather events that we've seen more and more of in recent years. Uh, it really connects the dot between climate change, which sometimes seems like an abstract, far-off, slowly emerging problem, and actual events that impact us in our daily lives, extreme weather events that take a human toll, that take a societal toll, that take an environmental toll. There is a relationship between this increase in, in destructive extreme weather events and the increased concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere from fossil fuel burning and other human activities. Right. And uh, tell us um, the relationship and the mapping of this relationship when it comes to uh, the melting Arctic and uh, also the uh, feedback loop in terms of sea ice reflecting sunlight back and how all of this contributes to the release of methane from uh, the melting tundra, how all this is related and how the mapping actually works. Yeah, there's a lot there. And, um, and and some of these pieces, you know, we're still trying to figure out the details. Uh, we don't have all the answers, uh, but that's not uh, a reason for, um, you know, th that shouldn't lead to uh, complacency. If anything, uh, the fact that we don't have all the answers and there are uh, uncertainties out there, that should be a cause for concern because it means that there could be unforeseen impacts even beyond those that we continue, you know, that we currently are able to uh, predict with climate models. Um, you raise a very good example of that when it comes to the Arctic. Uh, uh, there is a vicious cycle, as you allude to, where if you melt Arctic sea ice, um, and we're seeing unprecedented rates of melting of Arctic sea ice, well beyond what the climate models even predicted. Uh, well, when you melt away that ice, you're reflecting less sunlight back to space, so the Earth warms up even more, the Arctic warms up even more, and so you get even more melting. It's a vicious cycle. Um, and what it means is that once you get that process going, as we have by warming the planet, it's hard to get it to stop. And even though the climate models predict that it should take you know, half a century for us to see ice-free conditions in the Arctic, we are on a trajectory right now where we could potentially see that in a matter of you know, a decade or two decades. Now, uh, there is an important connection here. Uh, as one uh, colleague of mine uh, is fond of saying, uh, the Arctic isn't like Las Vegas. Uh, what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. Uh, there's increasing evidence that when you melt that sea ice and you warm up the Arctic, you can change the jet stream, the northern hemisphere jet stream that directs storms uh, to the west coast of the U.S. and into the United States. And there is some evidence that the loss of Arctic sea ice may be affecting the jet stream in a way that steers winter storms north of California. So California gets less rainfall, uh, less snow accumulation, and that leads to the sort of uh, you know, the sorts of unprecedented drought uh, conditions that we're still seeing in, in California, despite the recent El Nino event. That wasn't enough to undo uh, many years of drought conditions. Uh, there may be a linkage to Arctic sea ice decline, and we know that that is linked to human-caused climate change. So we haven't figured out all the answers, but again, that shouldn't be a reason for complacency. It means there could be some uh, unpleasant surprises in store. Now, Michael, you're world-renowned for your hockey stick theory, and I'm going to ask you about whether some of the predictions you made in that famous book that's just behind you uh, actually came true. So uh, let's take that up in our next segment.